Even by Google smartphone standards, the Pixel 6 was a poorly kept secret. It was mentioned in the company's own product coloring book for Pixel superfans at the beginning of the year, but now it's finally arrived in the UK. Announced at the Google I.O. Developers Conference in May, just as the original Pixel 3 was three years ago, it's essentially what you would expect from a Pixel a series handset, which is to say the Pixel 6 is a scaled-back version of the flagship Pixel 6, which we rather liked when we reviewed it in October last year. But there's a key difference this time. Google has taken a leaf out of the Apple iPhone SE handbook by matching the processing power of its flagship and making cuts elsewhere. The Pixel 6 uses Google's own Tensor chip, giving it the same processing and graphical grunt as the full-fat Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. This is backed by 6GB of RAM and 128GB of onboard storage. This isn't just positive in its own right, it also means the Pixel 6 is just as fast as the flagship version, which is probably why Google has felt confident enough to promise at least 5 years worth of security updates. And given Pixel phones get access to new builds of the mobile OS first, that shouldn't be underestimated. Elsewhere, the Pixel 6 has a smaller 6.1 inches, 1080p, 60Hz HDR OLED display with Gorilla Glass 3 protection and an underscreen fingerprint reader. It has reverted to the 12.2MP main camera used on the previous three generations of Pixel, as opposed to the 50MP number that debuted on the Pixel 6, but this is supported by a 12MP ultra-wide sensor and an 8MP selfie camera. Considering the mid-range £399 price, these cuts don't sound too unreasonable, at least on paper. The issue, however, is that the Pixel 6 is 9 months old by this point with the Pixel 7 on the way, and so it now costs considerably less than it did at launch. In fact, at the time of writing this review, the Pixel 6 is currently on offer for just £450. This is only a temporary deal, of course, but if savvy shoppers time it right, they can scoop up a flagship-level Pixel, with a larger, 90Hz display, 8GB of RAM and a superior 50MP main camera for just a little bit more. The Pixel 6 also finds itself in dangerous territory when it comes to non-Google competition. The mid-range market has exploded this year, with excellent choices coming from the likes of the Xiaomi 12 Lite £332, Samsung Galaxy A53 5G £399, and the OnePlus Nord 2 T 5G £369. It's also identical in price to the new Nothing Phone, one, although we're yet to receive a handset for review so can't comment on how the two compare. At first glance, the Pixel 6 doesn't look too dissimilar from its siblings. It's smaller in size, measuring 152 by 72 by 8.9 mm, but retains the chunky horizontal camera bar from the regular Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. This stretches across the entire width of the phone but isn't quite as thick as it is on the more expensive models. Rather than describing it as plastic, Google says that the Pixel 6 has a thermoformed composite rear and this is surrounded by an aluminium frame. The other Pixel models have glass-coated backs, which helps with scratch protection, although when placed next to each other you can't really tell the difference. Unfortunately, my initial review model had a small manufacturing defect. The rear panel was slightly misaligned with the frame, resulting in sharp protrusions on the bottom left and right corners of the handset. I discussed this with other reviewers at a recent industry event and I was the only one with this issue, so it's possible that I simply got unlucky with an early production sample. When approached for comment, Google said, we can confirm, on background, that this is a one-off fault. After getting in touch with them, I swiftly received a replacement handset which didn't have this issue. Moving on, the Pixel 6 is IP67 rated against dust and water ingress, meaning it should survive a dunk up to a depth of 1M for up to 30 minutes, and the front is coated in a protective layer of Gorilla Glass 3. The phone comes in a choice of three colors, sage, charcoal and chalk, pictured here. The rear-mounted fingerprint sensor has been removed and in its place lies an underscreen scanner, which I found to be a bit inconsistent. A message would sometimes display on the screen asking me to hold my thumb in place for a little longer before it unlocked, which wasn't ideal. We've also entered our third year since Google last incorporated face unlocks. 
Your guess is as good as mine as to why Google still refuses to add this feature. All of its rivals have been supporting this unmock method for years now. So its absence here is jarring. There's no space for a micro SD card either, which means that if you end up completely filling your onboard storage, you'll either have to start deleting stuff or pay for a Google One subscription. You're stuck with just the one nano SIM slot, too. Predictably, the Pixel 6a's display is the smallest of the three Pixel phones, measuring 6.1 inches. It's still a HDR certified OLED panel, however, with the same total resolution as the regular Pixel 6, 2400 by 1080, the only key difference is that the refresh rate is stuck at just 60 Hz. This is a shame, especially when we get to the benchmarks. Because otherwise, the Pixel 6a's screen is phenomenal, with color performance that surpasses the competition. It even gives more expensive flagship handsets a run for their money. There are three display modes on offer, natural, boosted, and adaptive, and color purists are going to want to enable the natural setting at the first opportunity. With this mode selected, our colorimeter recorded a practically faultless average Delta E score of 0.73 when tested against the sRGB color space, every single color was bang on the money. You certainly don't see that very often. Maximum brightness was measured at 857 candelas per square meter in auto mode with a torch shining on the ambient light sensor. Outside of this setting, the manual brightness slider peaked at a respectable 500 candelas per square meter and I recorded HDR playback at 760 candelas per square meter. On the flip side, there's not a lot that's new in terms of camera hardware. The Pixel 6a's primary camera is the same 12.2MP f1.7 sensor previously used by the Pixel for a 5G and Pixel 5, while the 12MP f2.2 Wide-angle unit is identical to the one found in the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. An 8MP f2 selfie camera sits inside a central hole punch notch on the front of the phone. That's disappointing, but it's worth noting that previous Pixels punched well above their weight in the photography stakes. So, when you consider that the Pixel 6 borrows various sensors from past releases, there's no reason to believe things have changed for the worse here. Especially since Pixel-specific camera features including Magic Eraser, which allows you to digitally remove objects in the background in the camera app, make a return, alongside face unblur and real tone. The latter is baked into Google's camera algorithms and helps to produce more natural-looking skin tones in portrait images. Sure enough, the Pixel 6a's cameras continue the trend set by Google in providing high-end smartphone photography at reasonable prices. The main camera captures a sense of depth and detail that's simply unmatched by its competitors, with impressive capabilities in low lighting conditions as well. The Pixel 6a's scenic images are simply stunning, producing sharp, intricate details and accurate exposures every time you press the shutter button. On a sunny weekend walk around Valentine's Park in London, the Pixel 6 a captured sun-dried foliage beautifully, with a pleasingly neutral color rendition to boot. Still images are just as impressive as light levels dim, too. The Pixel 6 a did a tremendous job brightening the overall scene without altering the tint of the image, and it kept the light bloom from nearby street lamps to a minimum as well. The Pixel 6 a's ultra-wide camera isn't quite as impressive, but there's still a lot to like. With a wide 114 degree field of view, you can squeeze plenty of stuff into the frame, and I preferred the quality of the Pixel's images compared to the Galaxy S22 Plus, but the caveat here is that there is a slight loss in detail over the primary camera. It's also worth taking a minute to talk about the Pixel 6a's portrait mode. Just like we saw with the Pixel 6, face unblur works really well, taking images from both the main and ultra-wide cameras and combining them to reduce blur on a moving subject. There's a good amount of background blur reduction, too, with crisp outlines, even separating individual strands of hair from the rest of the scene. The Pixel 6 is capable of recording up to a maximum 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. All modes are fully stabilized, and footage looked very good in my tests, recording judder-free video with a good amount of detail, even in dark conditions. So there's plenty to like about the Pixel 6a, then. Not that you should be surprised, after all, 
Google's pedigree is well documented at this point, but the Pixel 6a should still be applauded for squeezing this much stuff into a handset this affordable. Very few phones can match the caliber of images it's capable of capturing, and those that can are typically flagships costing twice as much as the Pixel 6a. Performance is also spot on, not to mention that it uses one of the most color accurate displays I've ever laid eyes on. But it's not without fault. The Pixel 6a's battery life is weaker than its predecessor, but still good, and the lack of a micro SD slot and face unlock continues to be an annoyance. What's most bizarre, though, is its timing. The 9-month-old Pixel 6 has dropped in price since launch and currently isn't far off what Google is charging for the Pixel 6a. If you can spare the extra cash, you're better off going with Google's flagship, if anything just for the slightly larger 6.4 inches 90Hz display and 50MP main camera. However, if your wallet simply can't stretch past the £400 mark, then the Pixel 6 of 5G can't be beaten, 